Jesus. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Just a little song that's been in my heart. I just wanted to do just a few lines from it because I'm thinking about <clears throat> what's going, you know, just this walk. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we'll get our business straight so that we can meet at the gate. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we'll get our business to rate so that we can all meet at the gate. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Hallelujah. Welcome to Ephesus Ministries Wednesday evening prayer and Bible study. Thank you for joining us as we continue our study of the book of Ephesians. But first, are there any prayer requests or praise reports this evening? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, do we have any, any prayer requests or praise reports? Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Father God, I just want to thank you on tonight, God. God, you have certainly been so good to us. You have certainly been so kind and so merciful, God. And your mercies are new every morning, God. Every morning that you wake us up, God, in our right minds, Lord, with the activity of our limbs, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Just safe and protected, Lord. Having had peace, God, you've been so good to us, God. So wonderful, Lord. There's none like you, God. There's none before you and there's none after you, God. Who is like our God? Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you on tonight for your precious blood, God. Thank you for the blood that covers us, God. Thank you for the blood that we can apply, hallelujah, over our families, God. We can apply the blood of Jesus over our situation. We can apply the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, God, even over our future generations, God. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you right now, God. You've been so good and so kind and so wonderful, God. Hallelujah, God. I want to pray right now, God. <clears throat> I want to pray, God. I don't want any rocks crying out for me, God. Hallelujah, Lord. I want to lift up your name on tonight, God. Hallelujah. I just want to bask in your presence. Hallelujah. And I want to be thankful, God. I want to be thankful for everything you've done for me, God. Thankful for everything you've been, God. Thankful for everything that you're going to be, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you blessed us so mightily, God. It's hard to even tell it all. You've been so good. I can't even tell it all, God. You've been so good to us, God. You brought us through another day, God. You brought us through another week. Hallelujah. And God, I thank and praise you, God. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for the miracles that are in the making, God. Hallelujah. I pray right now, God, that all of those who are going through a storm and going through a trial will hold on, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus and wait for their miracle, hallelujah. Wait on God, hallelujah. Lean and trust on the Lord, hallelujah. Walk in the Lord, hallelujah. He will see us through, hallelujah. God, I thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. There, God, there's nothing to be afraid of, God. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. All things come from you, God. And I'm so grateful for them, God. In the name of Jesus, you have brought us a mighty, mighty long way, God. 
Hallelujah, Lord. And we trust you, Lord, to take us all the way to the end, God, because truly you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray today for the young people in this nation, God. Hallelujah, Lord. There is The enemy is going so strong against them, God. But Lord, in the name of Jesus, we stand, hallelujah. We stand in prayer, hallelujah. We stand in prayer, praying for the protection, hallelujah. Praying for God, for them to come to you, Lord, to surrender their hearts to you, God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. I pray for this nation, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I, I rebuke that spirit of confusion, God, in the name of Jesus. You are a God that regulates the mind. You are a God that, hallelujah, that's a healer, hallelujah, from everything, every disease, God, every mental illness, God, every spirit of confusion, the Lord is able to heal and to deliver, hallelujah, just ask, hallelujah, just ask, hallelujah, Lord, I just thank you on tonight, God, hallelujah, I pray for the sick, hallelujah, which of which at this point, I'm in, I am one, but by faith, hallelujah, I am healed, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You said healing is the children's bread, God. Hallelujah. You said you were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities. You said the chastisement of our peace was on, laid upon you and with your stripes, we were healed, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for healing, God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for, hallelujah, I pray for the church, God. I pray for the whole church, the whole church, God. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, all the saints of God, all of those who've been praying, God, all of those who have been, I pray for them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, you've been so good and so kind, God. Hallelujah. I pray for those, God, who are in the hospitals, God. I pray for those in the nursing homes, God. I pray for those, God, who are just sick and shut in, God. Hallelujah, but you are God that sees. You are a God that hears the prayers, God. You hear the prayers, God. The secret prayers of our heart, God. Hallelujah, they shout to you, God. And I thank you, God. Hallelujah, I thank you, God, because I look to you, God. We look to the hills from what cometh our help. Our help cometh from you, Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah, because you are God. You are Alpha and you are Omega. You are the first, you are the last, hallelujah. You are the beginning, hallelujah, and you are the end, hallelujah. There's none like you, God. There's none before you and there's none after you. You are the creator, hallelujah. You are God, our father, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I bless your holy name on tonight, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we certainly want to pray for those who don't know you on tonight, God. Hallelujah. No man can come to you except you draw them, God. So we're praying on tonight, God, that you will reach out and draw, especially our family members, God, who don't know you or don't are not, are not receiving you, God. We're asking you to draw them in a mighty way, God. Right now, name by name, soul by soul, and location by location, draw them in a mighty and a powerful way, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Draw the lost, God. Help us, Lord, to be a witness, God. Help us, Lord, to share the gospel. Hallelujah. Help us not to be afraid to go when you tell us to go or say what you tell us to say, God. Somebody needs to hear, God. Somebody needs to hear on tonight how much you love them, God. Somebody needs to know that they are loved, hallelujah. Even if everyone else has abandoned them, God, that they are loved by the Father, hallelujah, by our creator, hallelujah. That God loves you, hallelujah. And God cares for you, hallelujah. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should have everlasting life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's reaching out, hallelujah. He's calling. The clarion call has went out over the earth. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you on tonight, God. Hallelujah, Lord. I certainly, Lord, want to continue to praise you, God. I certainly don't want any rocks crying out for me. Hallelujah. I certainly want my prayers to be a sweet smelling savor unto you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Go into each and every household, God. Go into each and every household of prayer, God, in the name of Jesus. Show yourself strong and show yourself mighty, God, in this last and this evil day, God. Ah, we need you so much, God. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you, God, for your blessings, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for whose we are. Hallelujah. Thank you even for that knowledge, God. Thank you for waking up knowing, God. Hallelujah. That I'm a child of yours, God. And that you heard my cry, Lord. And I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless you on today, God. You are so wonderful, Lord. Father, continue, Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to show yourself strong, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Worthy is God. God is worthy of all the praise and he's worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. It all goes to you, God. Hallelujah. All of it goes to you, Lord. Receive us, God. Receive the love, God, on today, Lord. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our, the Ephesus family, God. I pray for follow him family, Lord. I pray, Lord, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Touch our bodies, God. Give us the strength so that we can run for you, God. Hallelujah. Pick us up, God. Hallelujah. If we're down, down, Lord, pick us up, Lord. Heal us, God. Give us strength, God, so we can continue to run. Hallelujah. Run this race, hallelujah, with success. Run this race with passion. Run this race, hallelujah, according to your grace and in your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you're so wonderful, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we can't live this. We can't walk. We can't live. We can't move in you. We live and move and have our being in you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyhow, God. For whatever situation, hallelujah, anyhow, God. Hey, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your mighty name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I pray for each and every person, God, right now, name by name, God. Hallelujah. That's sick, God, that's facing any kind of surgery or any, anything like that, God. You see, God. Hallelujah. You see, Lord. You know, God. I pray for their families, God. Hallelujah. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would show mercy. You continue to show mercy because your mercies are new each and every morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forgive us, God. Forgive us in any way, God. Hallelujah. Forgive us in any way that of any offense towards you, God. Hallelujah. Purge us, God. Cleanse us and purify our hearts day by day, God. Purify our minds, God, day by day, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Help us, God. Hallelujah. Help us to be meet you around the throne with the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Just giving you glory for eternity, God. Hallelujah for eternity, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Special blessings and prayers, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over those who carry the word in their hearts, God. Hallelujah, because how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those, hallelujah, that spread the gospel, hallelujah, hallelujah, protection, God, I pray protection, God, hallelujah, watch over us, God, cover us in the blood, God, as we share your word, God, hallelujah, protect us, God, make us invisible, hallelujah, to the enemy, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, while we use our gifts and our talents, God, Hallelujah, while we pray for others, God. Hallelujah, while we win souls, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, while we show the love of Christ, hallelujah. Hallelujah, cover us in your precious blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. The blood of Jesus, hallelujah. To God be the glory, hallelujah. Ha. Huh. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm so thankful to God on today. I'm so thankful to him right now. Hallelujah. At this moment, I'm so thankful and so grateful to God. Hallelujah. Well, just for who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, seek my face. Hallelujah. Seek his face, not his hands all the time. Hallelujah. He's, a, he's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for allowing us into your presence. Thank you for allowing us, hallelujah, to approach you boldly, God. God, I thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for allowing us to feel how much you love us, hallelujah. You're not a cold or a distant God, hallelujah. But we feel your love in everything, in every way, in every day, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We see you in everything, God. The beauty of the Lord is in everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reign in our hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Cover us day by day, God. Lord, I just want to thank you. And I want to give you praise on tonight. And I, I want to pray for right now that you would just bless our church mothers and our church fathers. Hallelujah. Name by name, God. Hallelujah. Give them the strength. Hallelujah. In their bodies, God. Continue to give them strength. Hallelujah, Lord. Continue to let them stand. Hallelujah. Continue to let them continue to be prayer warriors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for pastors, our pastors, carters. Hallelujah. And I'm thanking, thanking God for Pastor Shannon Carter, that God blessed her with another year of life. Hallelujah. God is so good that way. He's so good that way. Hallelujah. Pray for all of our deacons and our ministers and our elders, name by name. Hallelujah. Their families, God. Our families, our friends and loved ones and their families, God. And our saints, hallelujah. And all of those, God, hallelujah. Because God loves everyone. Hallelujah. He loves everyone. And I just give him all the praise on tonight. I give him all the glory in Jesus' name. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Getting on with our lesson. Hallelujah. Prayer for realization. We're going to go right into our lesson. Thank you for just having a, a prayer, a heart of prayer. Hallelujah. And then now we're going to go into the word and the heart to let our hearts just stay. Hallelujah. Stay in a prayerful way. Hallelujah. Realization. Hallelujah. I like to give the definition of things because I like to understand a word uh, when it's something, when it's a word and I need to understand exactly what it means, I look up the definition. And so the definition I have tonight for realization is, it's an act of becoming fully aware of something as a fact. And then the second one was the fulfillment or achievement of, of something desired or anticipated. Practice what I preach. And I said, oh, okay. So then I thought about how we always say, uh, you know, we always say practice, practice what I preach, but the, the Lord is saying practice what he preaches. So thank you, Lord. So looking at the lesson, I didn't see the connection at first. I didn't understand what he meant by that because I looked at the title of the lesson and I kind of like leaned through the lesson and I didn't really understand what he meant by practice what, what he preaches. But then as I got into the lesson, I understand, I understood more about what he meant. So I had to wait for the spirit to open up the lesson for me. And like I say, he always gives me a hook. And just going back to last week's lesson, talked about position. And I'll be honest with you, the enemy came after my position really hard on this past week. He came after my position in faith this week. And I had some very, very difficult days of, with, of withstanding and holding my position and planting my position in faith against this cancer. I had some really difficult days. He really came against me, but through God, through Christ Jesus, I have the victory. I have the victory because I can praise God on tonight. I can praise him for what he's going to do. So. Satan is a liar as always, and the truth is nowhere in him. So this is what the Holy Ghost was saying. He said, Paul was a man like us wrapped in human flesh. He was a child of God and he was subject to human failings, but he was bold and courageous. But most of all, now, most of all, more, just even more so than bold and courageous, he was an humble servant of God and obedient until the end. So the Holy Ghost asked me, can we be any less? Can we be any less? But if we don't listen to God's instructions, 
And if we're not willing and obedient, we won't have the spiritual fulfillment and success and we'll be prisoners of the wrong cause. And as a Jew, Paul was once proud of his belief that only Jews were God's people. It was because he had taken the gospel to the Gentiles that he was in prison in the first place. So in his boldness and his zeal to be obedient to God, he suffered physical consequences. And that's always a possibility when we share the gospel, we're gonna suffer some kind of consequence physically. Okay, yet he felt humble. He felt even through that, even through his imprisonment and even through what he suffered, he felt humble that God would graciously choose him for such a noble work. And even though some of the far off Gentiles believed in God, they were still not God's covenant people in the sense that Jews were. So they didn't have the, they didn't have, even though they believed in God, they still didn't have the fullness of God. So when we take a bold position for Christ and defend what is true, like I say, sometimes there are severe consequences. Sometimes there are, there's mild consequences, but sometimes there are severe consequences. The Bible says, you have not striven yet to blood. Hebrews 12 and four says, that's Hebrews 12 and four, you have not striven yet to blood. Maybe some of you have, maybe some of you have lost some things in the fire, but God has never failed us. And sometimes, which I heard a message on, he allows us to recover all, sometimes. But either way, either way, he's still God. And he can do anything that he wants to do. And Paul was chosen for this special revelation from God that the Jews and Gentiles are united in one body. And we've been talking about that in the past lessons about what Christ did to bring together as one man, the Jews and the Gentiles and create one, one, one man. So, and as God's people, they equally, they share equally in the blessings. So how does this wonderful thing come to pass? It came to pass by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, by his suffering, death, his sacrifice, his resurrection. We today are the recipients of that glorious promise. We are right now. We, all of us are, with, even within hearing, are the recipients of that promise. We walk, and some may still be walking in the same darkness, though, as those ancestors who didn't know before Paul shared the gospel with them. Matthew 4 and 16 said, the people living in darkness have seen a great light on those, on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I put, thank you, God. I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Because a lot of times before we got saved, when we were living in darkness, we were living in darkness. Didn't even know that. We, we just struggled along, you know, and we try to figure out things for ourselves and we suffer needlessly sometimes. And we just continue to just feel around in the darkness and try to find our way, hallelujah. But when the light dawned, hallelujah, but we finally, we finally surrendered to the word of God, whoever, however God brought the word to us through whomever. And we finally said enough darkness and that great light shined on us and our heart was a moon with the knowledge of who Jesus Christ was. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then we saw, how, we saw how corrupt the darkness was. We saw how miserable the darkness was. We didn't understand it at the time. Because oftentimes those living with us and around us were in the same darkness. It was like the blind leading the blind, hallelujah. But thank God I was blind, but now, hallelujah, now I see. Hallelujah, now I can see. And, and I, don't, I don't take that credit for myself. I can see because of what Jesus did. And even though Paul was a physical prisoner of Emperor Nero in Rome, he was not really their prisoner, but a willing prisoner of Christ. Hallelujah. We talk, was talking about that, just being a prisoner of the darkness, hallelujah, and not even just 
realizing how what a prison, how locked down you are. You don't even realize that you don't have any freedom. You don't even realize that you're not really living, that you're half alive. How old, but when Christ comes into your heart, hallelujah, but when Christ ignites that knowledge in your heart about who he is and how much love we are by the Father, you come alive. You do, you literally come alive. There's a light that goes on in you. And you just, you're just alive before Christ. Hallelujah. And what does it mean to be a willing prisoner of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. What does it mean? It means I would imagine that a prisoner in the Lord will walk and not just talk in the ways of the Lord and would not be free to come and go as they please or to do whatever they please. But they would abide in Christ in such a way as to have their comings and goings directed by God himself, by the Holy Spirit, be instructed by the Holy Spirit. Our abiding in the Lord is a relational by abiding. In this relationship, we are not bound by rules, but are constrained by our relationship and love. Con constrained, it, it means that it's a, it's a way of it not being like bound in misery, but it's, it's like, you you want to you have a you just want to you you I'm just hard to explain. Our binding is a, is a relational binding. You it's 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 because we love God so much and we're so grateful to Him. I I love I, I use I love Him so much and I'm so grateful to God that I there's certain things I just I I keep myself I I I don't I don't do anymore. I don't want to offend God. I don't want to be a disappointment to God. I don't want to. So I keep, I keep their things that I do, keep myself in check. And the Holy Ghost helps me and instructs me and the word of God, because you got to know the word of God so that you can obey it. You have to learn the word of God. You have to hear it, learn it. You have to memorize it and walk in it because there's so much noise going on in the world today. So many people are saying so many things and putting the word Christian in front of it or mixing the word Christian with it. But what does God say about being a Christian? That's what's important. It's what, it's what God says, the rules that God created for us. And I, and we, I love him so much. It's not, a, it's not a burden to me. I love God so much that it's not a burden to me to follow his rules and, his, and the things that he considers holy and righteous. It's not, it's, it's wonderful. My heart just, I'm eager, you know, I'm eager to do, be what God called me to be. I'm eager to do what God called me to do. I'm a happy prisoner. I'm a happy prisoner in Christ. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't want the enemy messing with the lock. I praise God. Hallelujah. Um, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 says, and thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph and manifests the savor of the knowledge of him through us in every place. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. If we just continue to just keep our, keep our focus on God and keep our, our, our focus on what he says, because I always talk about being on the same page with God, because I think a lot of times we get sidetracked God is a God is a blesser. Oh, he loves to bless. But certain things I think that we, we lose sight of is it's not always in the material things. It's not, it's, it's a blessing to be saved. It's a blessing that God drew us and called us by name before the foundation of the world. It's a blessing. It's not always in the, you know, of course, God bless us with material things. But I just, I want to make sure that my walk is what he's describing in his word. So it's, I don't want my opinion. I don't want the opinion of somebody else. I want to know what God says. <clears throat> I want to know what he says about what he expects out of me, because I'm the one that's going to have to stand before God and give an account of every word and everything deed 
done in this body. And so are you. There's not going to be anybody around you to hold your hand or make an excuse for you. We are all going to have to stand before God. And our resume is going to be right there, laid out before him. Thank you, God. I'm sorry for that little brief thing. I'm going to keep my papers together. You know that Paul believed that only by God's grace could someone as unworthy as himself be trusted with so great a commission. I think that's a, once again, I say that's a very healthy attitude to have. Hallelujah. Because we're really not, we're not worthy. Hallelujah. I wasn't worthy. Hallelujah. When God called me and drew me and called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's why knowing that I'm, I wasn't worthy, I know that everything, all things, all the glory goes to God. How can I take any glory for myself about anything? I can't. It all goes to God. So he is trusted with so great a commission. I think that when approaching God, it's a very healthy attitude when approaching a God-given task. He also believed that only by God's power and continual guidance could he complete the task successfully. So how can we can't do anything without God? I always say that I'm nothing without God. I can do nothing apart from God. I need instruction from the Holy Spirit. I need, I need to know that I'm in with work operating within God's will. I need to know that so that I don't get far off track and start doing what I think is right or second guessing God and we would just keep an open heart and open mind before God and allow the Holy Ghost to speak to us we'll we'll get it right so also a healthy expectation this was God's plan all the time this was his plan to unite all believers in one church in and through Christ crushing the plans of Satan and displaying his great wisdom and power the glory always goes to God. I love that crushing the plans of Satan. Hallelujah. I love when Jesus crushed his head. Hallelujah. And God's going to crush in his plans. Hallelujah. So we have to make sure that our position is on the, on the right side. That we're positioned with the, with the winner who, who is Christ. Satan is the loser. Satan is the loser. And the extraordinary plan of God continues through us believers today. See, I mean, we, we, we look at the Bible and we look at all of those heroes of the Bible and all of those people in the Bible, but that's us today. We're, we're living the word of God today. All of those things that came to pass from then is we're benefiting from today. And this is so wonderful to me that the lesson said that even all the angels are a buzz about what the Lord is doing. Because believe me, the Lord is doing. It might seem like Satan has the run of the world and that he's doing all, but God is still doing. God has the final say in everything. Satan can't even move. He can't do anything on his own. So he keeps doing the same wicked stuff over and over and over again. But see, we don't have to allow him to use us as his vessels to do his wickedness. You don't have to allow him to do that. You can have, you can give your, your heart to Christ and you can walk in this way and cast the enemy out. See, then you have the authority to plead the blood of Jesus. When you surrender your heart to Christ and you become saved, you have the authority to surrender. I mean, you have the authority to cast Satan out. And you have the authority to, to claim the victory through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is such a freedom in trusting God with the details. I don't like that, that expression that they use, that the devil is in the details. I don't like that expression because I trust God with all of my details. I trust God to cross my T's and dot my mm -hmm. I's. I know that God, hallelujah, 
He's the author and he is the finisher mm -hmm. of my faith. My life is already written out to the very end. And God knows, hallelujah. Satan is not in my details. I, ca I casted him out in the name of Jesus. Don't let him be in your details. Hallelujah. There is such a freedom in trusting God with the details of our situation. There is, because when you trust God with the details of your situation, you can, you can lay down at night and go to sleep. You can carry on even in sickness or pain. You can carry on saying, God, I know you got this. I know you can take care of this, God. I don't have to worry about that. I know that my finances to my eyes look messed up, but God, you know, you already know that what you have for me. You are, have already figured it out for me. If I can just hand it over to you and take my hands off of it, hallelujah. I can be at peace. I can be at peace. I, pr I pray tonight. I pray tonight that somebody will turn over something that they've been tormented with, that the enemy has been tormenting them with, that you would turn it over to the Lord and, and trust in him. And, and I pray that you have peace. I pray that you can lay down tonight and sleep and have peace knowing, hallelujah, that I always say not a sparrow falls to the ground that our heavenly father doesn't know about. And I'll give God praise and I thank him more tonight for that. So we, are, we have to also understand that speaking the truth of the gospel with boldness, I love, I love that with bold, speaking with boldness, but it does not mean the boldness of the world. It's, that's not the boldness that God is talking about. We must still set the example of Christ's love and mercy, even in our boldness. Paul felt it was an honor to experience this tribulation, which was designed especially for him. And I know that God designs trials, tribulations, storms, especially for each and every person. Mine is designed for me. I don't want yours. You don't want mine. The Lord is using mine for, for his purpose, for his glory. Is it always pleasant? No. Sometimes it's very painful, very scary, but our life is hid in Christ. And I used to say that so, I used to say that so kind of like just gliding me. My life is hid in Christ Jesus. My life, is, but you know what I found out? My life really is hid in Christ Jesus. That's why I don't have to worry about cancer. I don't have to worry about whether, whether I just believe God. I believe he's going to heal. I believe his word. And I believe he's going to do it the way he's, he wants to do it. And Andy's going to do it in his time. And that's to anybody that's suffering or going through a sickness right now. God's going to do it. If you just trust in him and believe in him, he's going to work it out. And when God works it out, it's worked out. <clears throat> so Paul, so when he says be proud, in the, in the lesson when Paul says be proud in the verses, is not meant in the arrogant sense. Not in the arrogant, it's meant to be without shame of the gospel, without being ashamed. Romans 1 and 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Hallelujah. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Hallelujah. How often, how often out, and out there in the world and amongst unbelievers, hallelujah, did a spirit of shame try to get on us and try the enemy tries to use that to shut our mouths or make us afraid to be who we are, be bold. And I'm not saying being arrogant, not being arrogant, but be bold, which means stand straight. You know, no, don't bow your head in shame or be embarrassed, stand straight and be ready to give an account. Be ready to to minister with the Holy Spirit as he leads and guides you. Be ready. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Satan has caused terrible, awful, horrific 
troubles in this world, horrific. I mean, this is the things that are going on today. It baffles the mind. It doesn't baffle the mind. It is, I don't know. I, tell, I, I say it's like living in a science fiction novel. The things that are going on, the things that I keep continue to hear, the way the enemy is just taking over people's minds and causing utter confusion, causing fear, causing anger, causing hatred. But God is a mind regulator and God is a heart fixer. Hallelujah. But you see, so you have to come to come to Jesus. You have to surrender your, your life and your heart. Hallelujah. So we can pray for you. But we have, eventually you have to make that choice your own self that you're going to surrender to Christ. That you're going to surrender your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Thank you, Jesus. So he is always, yet it has always been possible. You know, one thing though, even though Satan is running a uh, muck in the world and causing all kinds of stuff, it's always, even like in the past, it is the same today. It's always possible to take up the bloodstained banner and pray on the behalf of the lost. Hallelujah. Pray on their behalf because they don't know. They don't, they don't realize they're lost. When they, you're in darkness, you don't see the light. Darkness is your world. Until the light goes, until you get that light in your heart. And then your eyes are open and you're no longer blind and you're no longer deaf. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are we excused? Does God excuse us if we're suffering or being persecuted? If we look at the history of the, in the word, no. We are not excused from sharing the gospel. Are we excused? If we are being lied on, talked about, abused or misused, that would be a no because we're not. Hallelujah. It is because of Christ that access to the Father has even been granted. So how dare we waste that access that Christ paid for with his blood? How dare we? How dare we step back and say, I can't, I can't do it. Christ already did it. He, he already opened up the way. He already did it. Not that he's not going to run into some difficulties or it's not going to be hard or, or even like I say, severe consequences. But we just have to trust God. We have to trust him. Hallelujah. That inner strength has been offered to every believer. That inner strength that God has given us to take one more step to take one more footstep toward him, to take one more, to take that and lift up that cross and drag it one more inch and drag it one more inch. Even if we fall to our knees to continue to drag that cross, God gives us that inner strength. We can't do it on our own. We can't do anything on our own. Hallelujah. To those of you who are in the heat of battle, hallelujah, hold your position, hold that position. God is fighting with you. He's fighting right along with you. It don't seem like it sometimes. It seems like when you're in the in the front lines, hallelujah. It's so sometimes it's easy when you're in your in the back in the back. You can you can stand in church and you can sing those songs. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, just all raised out and everything. But sometimes when you're on the front lines and you're in the heat of battle, sometimes you feel like you're fighting all by yourself, but you're not. God will not throw you. He will not leave you out there by yourself. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. He won't leave you. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes we just have to stand and, and resist. Behold your position. Hallelujah. He'll see you through. He'll, 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 he'll work it out for you. He'll work it out in his time. Not in our time. In his time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said Psalms. I love Psalms 121. Hallelujah. And then verse 1 and 2 says, I lift up mine eyes to the hills, so when cometh my help. 
My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. Do you know where your help is coming from today? Your help comes from the Lord, the creator of all things, the creator of heaven and the creator of earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul continually points us to the one that can help us. But we need to ask in faith. You have to ask in faith, believing, and you shall receive. And it's our job, too, to point those to the one that can help. Hallelujah. Even if when God helps others through us, we still point it back to God. We don't take the credit and the glory. We point it back toward God who loves us unconditionally and loves us enough to send people our way. He loves us enough to send help our way in the time of trouble. I love that all ask, I'm going to read that, all that we ask, all that we ask, hallelujah. I love that. All that we ask or think, above all that we ask or think, abundantly above all that we ask or think, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I say, say, why is it such a difficult mountain to climb? It's so hard sometimes. It's so hard, hallelujah, to, to trust and believe God. Even though God has blessed us in the past, even though God has just, if you can just look back, it's such a, it's so wonderful sometimes when you just sit down and just count your blessings. You think about all of the things that God has already done for you, already brought you out of, already blessed you with, already given you and done for you. You can't even, you can't even number them, but you can start with the cross. You start with the cross. Hallelujah. And then you think, you think, well, you, God, you've already done it all. You've already, you've already did, you, you even did this for me before. Why, why do I doubt? Why do I don't, why do I falter? Why do I stumble when it comes to believing that you can take care of this little tiny situation? Hallelujah. Because God can. Is anything too hard for God? We ask that question just so casually, but really, is there anything too hard for him? No. And he's proved it over and over and over again. And not because Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is wait. But there all, there's always an answer. There's always an answer from God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry, I want to go back one. Let me go back again. I'm not ready for my ending prayer yet. What a powerful privilege that Christ, our high priest, purchased for us with his precious blood. Hallelujah. And we are not to be selfish. We are not to be selfish. Okay, thank you. We are not to be selfish with our bold access to the throne. And it's it's time to stop being gospel fat. This is the, I don't know, it's, it sounds like it's such a flippant thing to say, but really it's true. We have sat at the table for so many years just being fed so wonderfully from the word of God and from preaching and from teachings and singing. And we've been fed so much. Hallelujah. And we've grown and say gospel fat. And then it's, we don't want to share. We need to share. And bring others in to get at bring others to the table bring others so even though paul was in a situation and i'm saying prison was a situation he still prayed for god to help the ephesians so can, we can we can pray for others even while we're going through situations even if we're going even if we're struggling or suffering or in a trial or thing we can still pray for others um have we put aside our own struggles to remember someone else in prayer and petitions before God. And it's not always easy. It's not always easy to, I have bouts of, I go through bouts of self-pity and I go through bouts of crying and, and asking God, why me? Why do I have to have this type of cancer? 
Um, why did I get the kind that only 2% people have this kind of liver cancer? I go through those bouts and um, I do, but the Lord always is so patient with me. He lets me cry. And he lets me, he allows me to cry and he lets me, um, then he soothes me, you know, and he lets me get it out of my system. And then he's like, okay, let's move on. Let's move, let's keep it moving. Let's keep marching. Let's put your, put your armor back on and let's keep heading toward the heading, heading up the walkway. Thank you, God. I thank God for that. I thank God. I thank God that he allows me those times. And I thank God that he doesn't let me stay in those times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it is done. And is it done? I said, when we, when we do remember someone else during our struggles, is it done with our feet both planted firmly in love? Both feet planted firmly in love because love has always got to be in the equation. No matter what you do for God, it's always got to be in the equation. If we're gonna, if we're gonna mirror our Father, if we're gonna mirror whose children we are, we have to have love. You can't say I'm a Christian and beat somebody with your fist raised. You can't. That's not how Christ did it. And it, it, it's really disappointing and sad when I see it that way. When I see um, people saying, you know, I'm a Christian, but their actions don't show it. They're, they're not showing their love of Christ. Thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. The glorious weight of his presence. The glorious weight of God's presence. Try to take it in, hallelujah. Try the, to measure its fullness. It's too much for our finite minds to grasp. But he invites you to try. Is there anything too hard for God? No. God is omnipotent, which is unlimited power, able to do anything. He's omniscient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Present everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. We often hear, okay, he's um, omnipresent. I'm sorry, present every, anywhere, at the, everywhere at the same time. But omniscient is having infinite awareness and understanding. Hallelujah. We often hear that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. It's true. He doesn't force us. He will, however, lead and guide a willing heart to do what is right and pleasing to God. And of course, we know that all of the glory belongs to God, always and everything, everywhere and by everyone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to take this little bit of time and uh, ask some questions to the class. Oh, yeah, I'm, asked, I'm going to ask a couple questions. Um, was Paul, here's, well, here's the first question. Here's the first question. Was Paul right to describe himself as, I'm sorry, let me go ahead. Was Paul right to describe himself as less than the least of all the saints? Was Paul right to describe himself as the least of all the saints? That's a question for the class. Yes. Okay. So how should we view ourselves? Just like Paul. What does that show, though? When he did that, what does that show? Hum humility. humility. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, humility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How, and the Bible tells us how much God hates pride. I mean, he didn't say he doesn't dislike pride. He said he hates pride. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. And also in Romans, it says for us not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Even mm -hmm. Paul said that. You know, yeah. but according to how God has dealt with um, every man through a measure of faith. Yes. Amen. 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 So what is your understanding? This is the next question. What is your understanding of the fullness of God? I don't have any words to even explain it, but I... The only thing I can think of is 
you're in a very awesome and blessed place, place in him, reaching you and you reaching him. Okay, that's interesting. I'll think of it. Anybody else? I'll think of it. Did I hear somebody else? I think of it too as, and my own opinion is dying more and more to self and allowing the Holy Spirit just taking so much control that we allowing him to take so much control and just, you know, just being in that state of just wanting to be in the presence of God and the fullness of God and the, the joy of God. And that's the way, that's the way I feel about it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that that's awesome. I agree with you. Uh, I was just thinking of a sponge and how a sponge can become so saturated yeah. with liquid that it just drips out. And when we allow the Holy Spirit to saturate our lives so, and we get away just from that knowledge part of God to that mm -hmm. intimacy in the relationship that God allows us to have with him, we become in the presence, like you say, in the fullness of God. Yeah, and I think too that it's your soul, it's, it just spills over. You ever been around a person that it's just like, they just illumined, you know, they, 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 you, the light is in their eyes and, the, and, the, and, and, and you can just almost just feel the presence of God on them and it just full, you know, just walking in, in, in godliness. I don't know how to describe it, but I believe it's like that, like a sponge too, it's just so much that it can't help but spill out. And that's, to me, that's powerful. That, that's awesome. And it's not even a loud thing, you know? It's not even a loud and boisterous thing. It's just a, it's just a natural, it just becomes such a natural part of you. So anyway, I'm gonna um, still got a few more minutes. Um, thank you, Jesus. I thank God for this lesson though. I thank God for how it touched me. I thank God that um, just even studying Ephesians, how it just, I don't know, it just made me look at my own walk, you know? Like I say, everything that you, everything that you study and everything that you, you look at in Christ and stuff, you know, look at in the word and everything. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, you, you don't use that to change your walk or motivate you, you know, it's, to me, it's like kind of like spinning your wheels, you know, it's like, I don't know, I, I had some, a couple of extra notes here I wanted to read, and I put down, why should I go? And you do think about how Paul, how he went when God sent him, and I put down, why should I go? And then I got the, I got a ver the verse uh, out of, uh, I didn't write down the scripture, no. Well, anyway, it says, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light to all that are in the house. So we don't light something and then hide it under something. And that's how God expects us. He expects us to, to, allow, to allow the world to see the light that's in us, because it, it comes a time when you have to share the gospel. You have to share all of these things you've been taking in for years and years and years. It wasn't given to us to hold on to for ourselves. It was God wants to use us. He gave us to share the gospel with others. If Christians only hang out with Christians, then how can we win the loss? If Christians all only go to school together and they socialize together and they live in a community together, if they never ever get out into the world to share the gospel, then souls remain lost. And I know everybody, that's not, that's not something everybody agrees with because I've had that discussion with other Christians before, but how can you, how can, the, how can they see the light if we keep the light within our, to ourselves, if we keep it hidden? or we keep it amongst ourselves, just letting it, feeding it, feeding it and everything. The Lord did not give us all of these gifts and talents and all of these things. He didn't give us all these things to keep it to ourselves. He didn't. 
we we're, we're to use this these things that he's given us to draw and win other people to him through the Holy Spirit. But if we if, if they don't have access to us, like God has given us access to him, and they don't have access to us, how can we help them? How can we help win them to the Lord? And God said, I don't give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So if God sends you, he will he will protect you. He will. He'll cover you. So we have to trust God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul. We have to trust God. Hallelujah. And I am now at 730. Now, oops. <laughs> okay. I think I uh, went over. Um, well, you can still hear me. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you are joining us via Facebook, we are in prayer every evening at 6.30 for, for Zoom. Information, email us at ephesusinfo.com at gmail.com or go to our website at www.ephesusministries.org. You can also join us every Sunday morning at 11.15 a.m. on Facebook live stream. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified every time we are live. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody still on Zoom? <laughs>